Hello everyone and welcome to another All Will Be One traditional draft. Um, Rare here is playable but not amazing. First of all, if you don't have anything to copy, uh, this will be just a 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but of course, later in the game you might have some kind of a 4 or 5 drop, even 6 drop down on the battlefield. And copying it for 3 mana or just you know moving this around can be quite nice. But... It's not really a, a strong first pick, I don't think. I actually do like the Unctus' uh, Retrofitter better as the 3-mana three, three blue card here. And I might just take it. Uh, Oxida Finisher will be good in the one specific archetype that plays like a 8-plus equipment. Uh, Mesmerizing Dose is blue card, but it's not as good as the Retrofitter. When you first pick this thing, it's easy to you know find support for it. Like... Stuff like the skull bombs, but there are a bunch of cheap artifacts you can turn into four fours with this thing. Uh, it's a fairly weak pack, so I think the peak is easy here. It is the best card. Uh, now this is a planeswalker, but it's not really that good. I suppose you could play this in some decks. You might get some two for one action if you get to you know use the minus two and then plus one and minus two again, but it's still only two mana creatures, so they can't be really that high impact. Uh, it's not going to be the pick here. Um, okay, so there are two very nice uncommons here. The Serum Snare. The Bouncing is actually quite decent here and in this format, and the Proliferating can be quite valuable in many blue decks. Uh, infectious Bite is of course good. Anything else from the commons? No, it's going to be one of the uncommons. And now the question is, do I just take the... Because I, the Bite is the better card, but I might just keep it totally blue with this uh, first pick. The ex Escaped Experiment is something I can look to get later, you know, later on, which is you know, decent enough to play with the ret Retrofitter. But I'll take the Serum Snare, this, this gives my colors better open. Uh, I don't necessarily need to be green here, and this pack has only one green card, so I'm not too disappointed about uh, passing the, the green card there. Okay, this thing is not the, two, the artifact flyer, sadly. This can, of course, be quite good. By the way, both of these com in combination would be very, very nice. I had a, a blue-black proliferate deck not too long ago, which fe featured, for example, the Scheming Aspirant which, you know, can, can get you quite a few of those drains. But question is, am I going to keep uh, picking a blue card or am, am I going to take uh, some other color card? There's a Crawling Chorus, which mm, could be played in blue-white. Uh, the red card's not so interesting, giving my picks here. Uh, I like this Aspirant, but... Well, you know what? I had so good feeling about the blue-black proliferating deck that I'm actually taking the Aspirant here. It's it's a little bit of a risky pick because it's not that amazing, but it's quite easy to proliferate a bunch with blue and and black. I mean, uh, so you can get some very nice drains here. And here, I think it's just going to be the Blight Belly Rat. I think the Raptor is better card, but. Um, yeah, I could maybe have some toxic per slash proliferating plan here. You know, dealing both poison and uh, then proliferating in more. Yeah, the raptor could be the peak. Um, anything from white. Yeah, there's still a crawling chorus here. But I think since I passed the first one, I'm going to pass the other one too. I'll just take the rat here. And, uh, okay, well, there's a whale of assimilation, which would be a very decent card for the blue. Uh white artifacts but i think i'm better off just continuing with this plan you know not going to white here anymore um and take something like this crap trap or maybe the infectious inquiry it's going to be one of those it's not going to be either of these blue cards i quite like the double proliferating proliferating in here i don't have anything for the retrofitter though but let's hope i will find something but yeah i'll take the five drop and okay, mesmerizing dose is pretty easy here now. Uh, I mean, if I'm gonna go with the proliferate, I don't know yet how what I'm gonna proliferate in this deck, but <laughs> hopefully, I find something like the you know, the two mana blue common that's a one three and it gets over the counters when you play non creatures and then it becomes unblockable. That's very nice with something like mesmerizing dose. So let's just take this and move on. 
Uh, okay, experimental augury. Sure, let's take... I don't want to play too many of these because it's Templos to use too mana for this, but um, I think I'm gonna lock to blue-black unless I'm really finding some bombs and of course the other card cards in this pack are not really a reason to abandon any of my color there. All right. Okay, just this here. So I, I see that blue blue white artifacts was was open here a bit, but um, I'm still gonna stick to the plan. I'll take the ascent here. It's actually a playable trick. Okay, offer immortality and the Vraska's fall. Maybe I should take the fall. I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be to poison the opponent with the proliferating, but hey, let's try it. I haven't really done that. Yeah, that's that's a decent card, but let's take the, the Edict here. And here, uh, Surgical Bay versus Anatomist. Do I want to play the formula thing that I may proliferate with? Tapping it is a big cost because this is such an effective blocker and then if you tap it, you can't block. Uh, I think I'll just take the Bay. Okay, sure. The best card in the pack is the Crescendo, and I don't think the Splitter is that bad, and this is decent in the four mirror deck, but I'll just take the Kinsmith. Maybe I find a bunch of those, and I'll end up playing them. Okay, Chrome Prowler, not that good, but it does kind of work with the Retrofitter, because it is an artifact. Am I gonna play a 5 mana draw 3? Uh, I think I just just don't like them. Okay, I got an Assimilation there, such late. <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean... So yeah, I don't think I'm necessarily gonna play this in the main deck, but it is... Yeah, I really don't think I'm gonna play a 3 mana 3 2 in this deck. If this is more of a controlling deck. Alright, so this pack of course has two very nice cards. I want to have them both. The Black Sun's Twilight. Very good when you get to play it for X equals 5 or more. And then of course the ultimate proliferating payoff. Troller Drake. Ah... Yeah, so this is actually quite inefficient when you play it at fewer than x equals 5. You know, for example, 3 mana for a minus 2, minus 2, 4 mana for a minus 3, minus 3. Now the flexibility still makes it quite decent, and it's a great, great payoff to get a creature with it. But I think in this deck, given what I have picked here, I'll just prefer the Troller Drake now. As crazy as it sounds, but this is a must answer threat for the opponent. And here I'm... It's just going to be the Blight Belly Rat. Pretty easy actually. Over the you know Thermophic expanse. Don't really need it that hard. That that hard is that <laughs> I, I I don't have such a dire need for the Thermophic expanse here. I have a couple of double casters, although I might not play this at all in the main deck, but yeah, definitely it's better to take the take this builder. Okay, what a pack. Um, I have three of these Medic Rest. There's also Hex God Slash. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I could rare after Medic Rare, but the, there is an anoint with Affliction. It's too good to pass up. Not sure if I'm gonna play a, this kind of thing in this deck. Not, not necessarily, but the anoint is such a good card. I'm gonna take it here. Okay, blisters are... Well, I suppose this is a kind of a proliferating payoff. It is quite expensive, though. Because I do see also the Gitax and Raptor here, and I also I have to not consider that I, maybe I won't be able to play the Retrofitter in this deck at all. There's just no target for it. I don't have any artifact cards. Do I even have any artifact token maker here? And I don't think I have. This is good with proliferating as well. This is expensive. I have already 5 mana draw spell and, and 5, five mana creature. I think I'll take the raptor here. It's, it's a very nice blocker and then can also, of course, be a decent attacker when you can can afford to start attacking with it. With it. Uh, Fisher, yeah, it could be better than 5 drop than the inside. There is another experimental augury, but I sadly haven't found any of those 2 mana 1 threes that become unblockable with enough oil counters, because the ogre is quite nice, cheap way to give them two counters. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess I'll take the ogre here. This is like okay, but nothing that's super important. 
All right, this thing says proliferate, but this pack also now has the Icarus synthesizer, and I don't think there's any. I mean, there, there are cards I would pick over the synthesizer, but this is such a high priority for my deck. This is still a five mana. Now, the, the good thing about this card is that it can return from uh, creatures from the opponent's graveyard under under your control, but um, which is all of course much better than just limiting it to your own graveyard. But I'm still need, needing the synthesizer more than anything else, so. I'll take that, and I think I'll take the... Wow, there's another Rot Priest I'm passing here. <laughs> Although this this has another Rot Priest in this same pack, so even if I was Black Green, I would have to make a decision between these two. Alright, anyway, let's take another dose here. In pack 3, I really want to get more of these synthesizers. Alright, here I will... Oh, that's another 6 drop, that's... Oh, okay-ish. Should I take them? I mean, I have some poison interest to, you know, deal poison to the opponent, so I think I'm gonna take the toxic creature. Now, the retrofitter is, you know, in effect, sorry, toxic one creature as well. I might, you know, actually play it for that reason, but I'm not sure. Anyway, here I take the toxic two thing, so I might have a, yeah, poisoning plan here. Here I'll just take the expanse to fix my mana over the, you know, prism or whatever, and I guess I'll take the fisher here. Fisher here then, and uh, there's nothing, nothing interesting in here anymore. Okay, another one of these. I'm not playing all those five drops, but I might as well put ten to the main deck now. And final pack gives me a mind splice apparatus. Not exactly a limited card, uh, and the logbook is also not. I mean, you would have to be going very deep uh, with the artifact plan to play this card, and of course my deck isn't really there, so. That's not happening. So should I take something like another Raskas Fall? I don't really want to play multiples of these. I suppose this is a best of three event, so I can sideboard in and out these. So I might, you know, start with one in the main deck, have the other one in my sideboard, or something like that. I could take a Gladiator. Uh, let's see the two mana creatures. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I actually do need two drops here. The injector is maybe not what I need here. I'll just take the two drop, just to you know, not have a shortage of them. All right, this pack is of course very nice because there's the Skull Dweller and the Surgical Skull Bomb, which I would both be very happy about picking, but this is just a crazy good card. First of all, even if you read only the first line of text, that's enough. I mean, assuming the next lines won't be some kind of a drawback but it's not so two mana two one not even a double caster can't be blocked it's unblockable right out of the bat so great and then of course this gets this, this rewards you from uh, casting you know non-creatures and instant instant and sorceries so it's just a crazy good card so very happy to find it here uh nimrazer paladin probably uh, is probably the pick here the glare is Good removal, I suppose. I don't have that many sacrifice for there for it, so I often might have to play that five. Yeah, their paladin is just a clean two for one. Toxic two might be relevant. Let's take it. And here, skipping aspirant number two. Now there's also mesmerizing dose and this thing inquire here. But well, I'm already at 24 non lands here. I think I have a very decent amount of cards that just say the word proliferate. I'm actually gonna go with the double aspirant deck now. Okay, but there is the one you know, card that actually is very good with the retrofitter. I mean, you could make this into a 4 4 flying vigilance creature when you curve out this into the retrofitter, but I don't just think I need the watcher in this deck and, and I probably won't be playing the retrofitter either. It's a two, 3 mana 2 3 toxic one. I don't think I'm that interested in it. So I'm just taking another head cleaver here. And there's a skull bomb. Oh, there's also. I mean, yes, there's a skull bomb, which is not even for my colors, but I actually meant to <laughs> mention the, the mesmerizing dose. But I think now that I have two of those, uh, I'll take one whisper of the dross, which you know also is removal and proliferation in the same, and it's a cheap instant. So let's take that instead. And, 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 uh, I guess the Skitterling could work in this deck. Because I, of course, have a bunch of ways to make 
to give the opponent poison. Now, I can still consider having like a Vraska's Fall number 2 in my sideboard, or maybe just a Dures. But I think I'll try the Skitterling. Wow, a third Rot Priest I'm seeing in the draft. <laughs> All right, all right. I don't think I'm gonna take the five uh, toughness blocker here. I'll just take the draw spades. Man, triple rot priest. If I somehow would have ended up black green, I don't think I could have ended up black green given how the pack one went. But still, <laughs> oh boy. All right, here I will still get an option for the Raskas fall. So this time I'm gonna take it. Probably main decking only one though. Okay, here I can take offer immortality. And another two drop here. I'm not taking the uh, the kinsmith. I'm not needing that. Here I think I'll take the inquiry over a third gladiator. And I got the Krimnark too. Interesting. That's not playable in this deck. All right then. <laughs> this is 33 cards, and yeah, I'm not playing the centurion. Yeah. So this is now a bunch of cards I'm gonna make. I guess there are some easy cards because I can't just play all the fives. I think. Well, first what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see how much proliferate do I have here. Now, these only mention proliferate. These don't actually proliferate. 1, 2, potentially 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that is a bunch of proliferating. And, you know, a couple of payoffs for them, too. I kind of want to try the insight. So... So, so, so. Um, okay, what happened? <laughs> Some lag here. I'm gonna cut both the fishers, and these will be my five drops. I think I'm also cutting the Grimnak from, from the main deck. Might be a decent sideboard option. But this is now my top of the curve is two four drops and three five drops. And now I think one main deck Vraska's Fall is the maximum I'm going to play. Skitterling. Uh, I guess the um, Aspirant Ascent maybe is not such a main deckable here. Thing. I mean, it is main deckable card for sure, but I have to cut so many things that I don't think I have room for this specific effect. It doesn't really do much. The, the main purpose for this card is will be to fun function as a sideboard card against you know opponents that might have burn-based removal or maybe a bunch of flyers and stuff like that. Uh, maybe the same applies for the offer immortality. I don't have any like a huge reason to play this thing. And then can I afford to cut like one of the gladiators because that is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna cut one fleshless gladiator and now I'm gonna make the decision about the retrofitter. I have no artifacts in the deck. I think if I'm not forgetting something, the only way for me to create an artifact is when this thing dies. So the retrofitter is just going to be 3 mana, 2, 3, toxic one, which you could play if you just want to have some sm smooth mana curve, but given my other 3 mana plays, I don't really need it. It was my first pick in the draft, but like I said, you need some support for it, and usually it is easy to find it. You don't have to be blue-white artifacts uh, to make the retrofitter. Uh, work, but in this draft, um, uh, I just didn't get anything early enough to to you know. The, once I saw the one one vigilance flyer artifact creature, it was too late. Of course, uh, uh, one such a card is not enough to make the retrofitter good. So let's just cut this thing. Um, okay, that's twenty five now. So the skitterling might also be a kind of a sideboard card. I'm not even sure how easily will I be able to cut up to the opponent. I think it's not that hard, for example, with this many creatures with Toxic 2 and, and a bunch of, you know, I have a couple of early Toxic guys, although I have only two of them. This thing gives them a poison counter, and this thing gives them a poison counter. So there's like a some way to make them, make them uh, corrupted, but... But... Um, I think the Skitterling is at its best when you also really care about having a 3 mana 1-4 to block the opponent. It's not so great against all decks. For example, Red Green can just, you know, outside, have, have just big enough creatures to not care about the 1-4. Uh, 
All right, so now this would be 24 cards. I believe I could play just 16 lands in the deck, but I do have a 5 mana draw 3. Um, and then I have a couple of lands that sack into draw, so I believe 17 lands would be, will be the safer one if I just find some easy cut here. I know it could be the Fleshless Gladiator number 2 as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 drops. Then I have an Anoint with Affliction and the Whisper of the Draws, which can also be, be used early game in the early game too you know, keep the board state fairly equal. Yeah, I have also this card draw spell and, and indeed this one, so I, I believe I should play 17 lands. Flooding out shouldn't be too, too um, likely of a scenario. And the worst card in the deck is the Gladiator. So I'm gonna cut it from the main deck. When I need more two drops for defensive purposes, for instance, I will maybe sideboard it in. But this is what I'm going to start with. And um, yeah, that's the deck. Let's see how many things I can pick. This that this is creature with mana value three or less. One, two, three, four, five. You know, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ways to nine, nine things to pick with this. It's quite enough, I would say. So draws pit expands, and the surgical bay should be here. And then I have the double caster blues in here. Even though I have more black cards, uh, I have no black double caster, which means I will play playing. Uh, actually, with the expands, I could play just seven plus seven basics. Have a kind of an even mana base for both colors. And I guess the Ogurus can find me my second blue when I really need it. Fine, I'll play. I still have so many early uh, black cards that I, I should maybe play an even mana base. But uh, you could actually play also eight, eight islands, six swamps in here. But I think I'm gonna go with the even split here. If I had like an e the same number of blue and black cards, maybe I would opt to play more islands. But since I do have more black cards, I think this is fine despite me having these double casters and these are also cards are also cards you don't necessarily want to be casting on turn three so it's easier to find mana for this uh, for the moment when you actually need to cast them so that is the main deck All right, I'm on the play, so the missing a two-drop creature is not a big, not such a big deal at least. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this on turn two or not. I guess I have to. Well, now it's slightly different. I might want to save some something for the proliferating. I have this tap land anyway, so I'm gonna play this now with the hive master on turn three. And. Um, Okay, open didn't have a two mana creature, they might have a counter spell. No, they haven't. Okay, this might be a kind of a mirror match style. But um, yeah, this also deals a poison to opponent, then the proliferate can matter. It this could be a game where I you know can po poison them out. Uh, they have a one mana spell. It could be the minus one, minus one. But I have an anoint with affliction to kind of punish them, so. Okay, it doesn't seem like they have anything. So now I'm of course I'll just play the head cleaver. Okay, so the one mana spell they have is the removal spell. Because they did have priority before and well, they had only swamp up. So it's the thing that, you know, kills something with five mana. Or or by them sacrificing. Okay. Sadly I couldn't connect with this guy, but this is all quite fine still. Okay, they did not attack. Why? Why did they not attack? They are not blocking here. Okay, so I can play the Raptor now. This is actually very... Yeah, this is going to exile anything because this Ogre will, will make them corrupted. So this will be... Have, will have no um, limit. Kite. This also exiles... Well, 
only creatures. So this thing says, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to the player, you may return one of them to its owner's hand. If you do, you may act. Okay, double activation there. Um, up to one target creature can't attack or block until your next turn. Draw. Ah, okay, they they can make a death toucher. Sure. Um, at least this kite doesn't disappear uh, after the first turn, so I should happy. I mean, they have only one mana here, so. They can make a minus two, I mean, a, a two, 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 two death toucher. Okay, they choose that raptor can't attack or block. Yeah, now they can connect with this thing. But I can use anoint with affliction to that. So they don't actually get to choose to use it. Yeah, get this thing. That does mean I will not be able to kill this thing. But I won't be able to kill it now anyway. Okay, they actually are gonna jump block. I think I can take a jump block because I can't kill Kaito anyway. Um, I should though play the ogre now. Blight belly rat or another ogre here. Okay then. I guess the rat isn't actually that great, so I'm gonna take the auger here. And they get poison, I get stuff in here. Alright, so who knows, maybe I will <laughs> somehow... I'm gonna just first cast this guy. I mean, I can poison them out. Alright, there is a troll drake now. So I should attack here. This will be unblockable on the next turn, but are they gonna jump block with it? No, they took their, their damage, so they can make it... Well, it doesn't matter, I wanna play this Troller Drake regardless, so let's see what they can do with the Kaito now. That won't attack or block. And now they can of course attack with the synthesizer and I have no mana up. So they can now... But they would have to return this to their owner's hand so they lose the counters there. Because now they they only get to use another ability here if they do return it. And they did choose to do that. So they, now they have another up, uh, ability up. I think they may be just gonna plus one again. No, yeah, the, the Tro Troller Drake is now dealt with and what's their next okay they have the aspirant 2 here and they I suppose are gonna play the synthesizer here yeah Kaito can of course win the game but I didn't really have a have an opportunity to kill it Alright, my own Aspirant. I'm not sure how relevant that is, but I suppose I have mana to cast it now. Because I, I will be playing the Ogre here now. <laughs> well, this is... I think the proliferating is the most... I would also like to have the synthesizer though, but I feel like I want to proliferate here more. Whisper of the Dross. Because that allows me actually to cast the Whisper and the Anoint with Affliction here. Because now I will try to attack Kaito again. They have to make some kind of blocks. They can double block, but I can, you know, punish them with them. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just um, try to exile this guy here. It worked. That's dead. Okay. So now they at least won't be able to double activate this because they don't have any haste there. Hopefully, they can only make one of my guys unable to attack, and I have two flyers, which will be, you know, enough to kill the Kaido at least.
I still think they do have the 5 mana removal though. They can also do a proliferating for the Kaito if they want to. Although this will be tapped in that case, it's probably not what they want to do. And now they made the Death Toucher, so they now both of these flyers can attack now. Can they deal with them both with those two cards? When this creature leaves the battlefield, okay, they get okay. They had to clear there and they kill my Drake. But I mean, I still can attack with the Raptor. Do they have a way to deal with it somehow? Uh, first of all, let's mm, let's do like this. Draw a card. Okay, Uraskas fall. Well, that is of course very fantastic. So let's do it right away. They can sacrifice Kaito also, by the way. I don't mind which they sacrifice. Uh, that is, that is kind of okay. And now I can. Well, I can't kill it. I know I could. I can attack into it, but that's really not gonna give me much benefit. I'm gonna pump this guy for quite a bunch. Uh, I could leave it to. Yeah, I'm gonna do the full four here. Nimbriser Paladin. Gonna get the scheme in as pirate, so. We have very similar decks here. And they might get some life from the 1 3, of course. Okay, let's first, you know. Thin the deck, and then I crack the crack the cross pits. All right. Don't think I have any looting. So okay. Well, I played a land already. Um. Well, I can have a attack for one damage unless I want. To. I'm not gonna attack for. 3 damage. I can attack for 2, but I want to leave 1 oil here because of the proliferating here I have available. But I suppose I can activate it once. Make them go to 2. Now, the, sadly, they have the Aspirant again, so when they, they proliferate, they also gain life. They also do gain life there. I guess if the Paladin, I will just block with the Hive Master and then minus 1, minus 1 it at the end of their turn. Hopefully, that will work. Okay, well, there's the proliferating. Yeah, I, I'm a bit sad about them dealing with the all the stuff I had, but I guess I still have good draws in the deck. And if they gain some life, I can still poison them out. Okay, they have the. We have completely. I mean, this is just too many same cards. I, I, I don't actually like mirror matches in constructed magic, and I don't like them in limited either. For some reason, I don't know what's with that. But. Them having the draw 3 means that I want to have my draw 3 now too. Instead, I have only that. So I think I'm gonna lose now because they just drew so many more cards. And this is not really, I'm, I'm not, this raptor isn't the clock here. Yeah, they can just tap their own aspirant doing the thing. I can still maybe, you know, find enough proliferating to, to make them to go to 10 poison here. But I'm actually, I mean, if, they, if half of their, their spells will proliferate. Um, okay, I got up just that. That's, that's not a proliferating. That's just a poison counter. I think I can leave with one. But um, I mean, I need to draw something else than lands. I have three lands in my graveyard. Oh come on! It does have to be the. I mean, the amount of spells they have cast in these two turn cycles is so much more than I have cast. I have cast nothing. So three lands in graveyard, four in the, on the battlefield, one in hand. So I have five lands left in the deck, 12 spells. Yeah, I'm not gonna jump block that thing. I need to find something now. Please not a land. Oh, come on. All right, so I totally flooded out here after having a very good start, but I mean, they were able to stabilize and they had more spells than I. What can I do? Alright, so I think against this opponent I should play the Krimnark, maybe a Fisher too, more threats, I, I think I like that. And then I don't need stuff like um, 
think the, the minus one minus one isn't even that great here. Uh, even though it's pro proliferates, I still think I'm cutting that thing. And then... Um, Oh, tough to cut anything else. It's really tough, actually. Maybe the Vraska's full, although I think all the cards they have, yeah, they are actually quite decent for me to make them sacrifice, but I'm not cutting a land because I put a 5 and a 6 drop here in. Yeah, that's tough. Very tough now. Maybe the cream knock shouldn't be there after all. Kind of like it though. They have removal for it, but this gives me some value. They have either discard or give me life. Um, the bounce bill, it's such a nice effective thing, but maybe I will. I don't like to lose so many of my proliferate effects though, so the scheming as parent becomes worse, of course, because I already sideboarded out a proliferate effect. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut one aspirant and the serum snare, and I'm gonna put the second copy of Vraska's Fall in. Don't know how much sense that makes, but that's what I'm gonna do. And let's go. Again, I will first play the Vraska's Fall before I proliferate, if, if at all it makes sense. Okay, they did mulligan. Yeah, I don't think I needed that much to push through in the final, in the first game, but they just removed my, uh, my, my guys and then... Well, I don't know. Well, that's something... Uh, I don't really like to. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the Frascas for that, but of course I have to because they will always be able to sacrifice the least useful creature they, they have. So. I mean, they might have a two drop and sack that. Alright, well, there's a Gitaxian Raptor. Well, let's have a bit of a change of plan in that case. Just do this thing. Oh, come on, a counter spell on turn two. <laughs> uh, well, that's rough. They did mulligan though. And I guess the O3 won't be doing that much good in the end. Although it's, it's gonna be exactly good because of the Vraska's fall. That's just how it goes. So I can only like deny one. I can like deny one, one scry from them, but let's do that. I mean, this Vraska's fall isn't gonna get any better. By the way, it's also bad synergy with the mesmerizing dose. I have two of these doses and two of these Vraska's falls. Yeah, but I should actually realize that, that it's really bad. Okay, so... Well, I can't let the Necrosquido do its thing, so I believe I'm just gonna do this. And then Grimnark, making them discard their final card. Well, oh, no, they will have two. Well, maybe they still play a spell. Hopefully they don't have another counter spell. Okay, well, they have. Well, they are not gonna pick, pick a bad card with the Ogre, so let's see. They have to discard either the one they just pick or the one in their hand. Okay, Nimrazer Paladin will get the Raptor back. Let's do this first. So. They will discard. Oh, they had a counter spell. Wow. Well, at least they couldn't use it. Uh, so they have an hour, six turn clock, and the Kaito, 
made a comeback. So this can't attack a block. Yeah, of course, them having a planeswalker, you know, that's still a very strong planeswalker. So it is part of the reason I lost the game one. I had to focus on killing Kaito instead of doing doing stuff against them. Um, so this is of course, yeah, they can, if they want, they can bounce that and activate Kaito again to make the Grimnark unable to. But they have a death touch blocker now, so oh, well, they still do it. Okay. Um, well, this is really miserable now. I guess I can accept losing two games to, games to, games to Kaito. Yeah, that happens. Because any other card... I mean, that's not a bum, bum of, of some kind. Um, I'll take two here. I mean, they might return it, but at least it's a token, so they don't get it back. But they can make both of these unable to do anything. I've got the upper hand now. Okay, they chose not to. I guess they have more removal than another Nimrazer Paladin of their own. All right, island and a creature maybe. Who's not gonna attack? Well, of course the 5-5 five five isn't gonna attack. And now, am I gonna play this? I think I'm gonna do this right now. Proliferate. Yeah, well, let's do this. Um, well, I guess I can play both this and that. There's no point. Yeah, Kaido is gonna get, get out of hand here. That is not nice. All right. The problem is the opponent has too many cards in their hand. They can just, you know, keep... Because the Kaido can neutralize my creatures. At least one per turn. They can keep it so that the Kaito will be protected. That's the issue. And as long as the Kaito is protected, uh, there's no way I can progress in this game in any way. That's the kind of mini game that happens against the Planeswalker once the opponent can, or or me of course, can land one. It's often all about the Planeswalker and uh, yeah, they can have the efficient removal there. And then, yep, they can play two with ground guys. Now they are not good enough to block the four four, but they can say with Kaido that the scrap trap does nothing. Now they, this thing flies and can deal four, but if they attack with the two two, they can choose to bounce it, which is make makes it disappear, and then use the plus one on the Gitax and Raptor, or I can block here. And then, of course, I don't have the Kit Action Raptor anymore because that thing has death touch. So I guess I hope they don't bounce it, but it's really unlikely. They're gonna bounce it and say that the Raptor won't be attacking. And of course, the plus two minus two happens when it leaves the battlefield. So this is just Kaito dominating this game. And I have no way here to really. Um, well, now I do have some way. I kind of want to... Yeah, I guess I guess if the next draw is a land, I'm happy to play this right now, but I could play the Head Cleaver and see. But yeah, the Head Cleaver is able to be blocked by both of these, so uh, let's do this. You know, maybe I can just discard the Head Cleaver if I draw something good here, but of course it was a land, so no, no big deal. So I can't attack thanks to Kaito. Double activation. So they have a scry in upkeep. Yeah, they have only one card in their hand. They will draw a card. They scry to top though. That's of course not good. But now they... I will be able to block this thing. Unless they can, you know, make it four oil counters. <laughs> okay, yeah, they, it's... <laughs> they have all that interaction too. I even drew, you know, sideboarded into more threats. But still I'm getting just totally answered here. 
And the Kaido is now at 6 loyalty. Are they actually gonna be able to make this thing un be able to, unable to block? At, I mean, unblockable. No, they can't make it unblockable. So I can now, you know, make Kai to go to 3 loyalty back, but it's not that great. Of course I drew a land here only. Man, this is so annoying. It's all about Kaido now. And I'm at 7 life, you know. I'm actually gonna die here very soon uh, once they make this thing unblockable and they can do the gate those tokens which make me lose life. Okay, so do they crack the land? Maybe they have a, They didn't scry in upkeep, but that's probably explained by them needing blockers rather than them being happy about what they're having for this turn. So I suppose if they now have two lands in their hand, I would be in a decent shape. Okay, the 4-4 four four can't do anything. I can run circles and they have you. another ground blocker and maybe a land drop. Okay, I don't know about that. Okay, I need something else than a land though. This is not enough to win. They have blockers on the head cleaver. 0-3 oh, and a 1-3. Okay, now this was exactly what I needed here. Now my raptor can deal 3 if I want to. Okay, synthesizer brat. I sadly can't have another proliferating effect now, so I can't kill Kaito, that's the thing. And if I'm gonna use both of these counters, I'm, Kaito goes to one loyalty, but then this is no longer going to be able to... ...going to be able to, you know... ...get more oil. No point at attacking with Head Cleaver, because they have the double block on it. Synthesizer isn't gonna be able to do much. I mean, if Kaido is at two loyalty, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. I mean, in terms of um, it's it's fine. It whether it's at one or two. So I'm going to just activate the Raptor once and still maybe find some other proliferating. So I'm gonna play the rat now, because if this dies now, at least I get to proliferate another counter on the raptor. They have been able to scry a bunch, now this was at least scry the bottom, are they gonna use it now? They are not, they of course do need the blocker here. <laughs> it's all about Kaito. Okay, do they find a rat with that thing? They are rats, for example, this thing. Okay, no rats there, but they have another ground blocker, which makes the scrap trap actually now bad, so... They can afford to do that, and they can start, you know, Kaitoing the, my flyer now. They don't have an attack though. Okay, I need some good spells. I don't have enough here with this board state. Okay, Troller is of course good, but I need now some of my things that can actually give the counters to those guys. Hmm. So if I attack with the Scrap Trap, they will block with the Chiromonix and the Lightbelly Rat, for instance. That doesn't actually make a lot of sense. It doesn't. So it's a total stalemate, and you know what is bad for a stalemate? The fact that opponent has... Um, the fact that opponent has um, a planeswalker. They love the stalemate in that case. Uh, so... Okay, they're gonna use the final. I guess they are scrying some lands to okay, lands to bottom. Now they were able to scry the top, but this no longer has any oil, so proliferating won't add add oil to that thing. 
now. Oh, the opponent is at 22 life here. I guess I can maybe try to poison them if I ever get to deal with the Kaito, but I can't. I have to focus fully on Kaito. There's no other way here. There's no other way. And I need some good top decks because I only have... Oh, well, of course they had a... Of course they had another... I mean, of course the opponent has what? Too many removal spells. Kaito. That can actually proliferate more stuff to Kaito if they want to. And synthesizer will be okay. It didn't, but this would have been unblockable too. But I guess they can't really afford to. Although they can, they. I mean, they don't actually need the Kaito here. If they can just win with the synthesizer. Now their hand is empty here, at least. Let's draw a non-land. That's the worst card I can draw. At least I sideboarded one of them out. Ah, uh, this is such a miserable thing. They had a kill spell on my flyer. They can st keep neutralizing the raptor here. This is such a frustrating game because I don't have enough to attack the into Kaito here. Wow. I'm almost conceding here. They just keep. I mean, they, they didn't even scry into that. They just top decked yet another removal spell. This is now a 3 3 unblockable. I will see what my next draw is. Maybe I can gain two life here. But now this is gonna deal three to me. When this cleaves the battlefield, I lose two. So let's see now. They actually chose to do that so that they can make another two two. Yeah, they make another two two. That means once these guys die, I die too. But I might be able to proliferate into more life here. I'm a bit surprised they actually went to neutralize that thing. Uh, okay, that's not helping. Alright, so what a game. The opponent played Kaido and there were like 10 turns of me trying to deal with Kaido. It didn't work both in both games. Actually, I did deal with Kaido in the first game, but it took too much effort and then I started flooding out. So that was miserable. <laughs> Let's see what happens in match 2. Well, I have the great two drop, but I need one mana for it. Yeah, this is. I'm on the draw, so now the point is can I draw in two draw steps one mana? Because my hand is very good. Even if it is an island, I cannot use this to get the swamp. So I think I'm gonna keep it. It's very risky, but this is such a nice two drop. They can, of course, remove it with anything, but this can find me the swamp for these things. So I'm going to risk it. And didn't get punished this time. Okay, please don't be another blue black deck. Uh, should I? Yes, I should play the rat now. Because I actually want to deal one poison to them if possible. Okay, blue green. Blue green it is. Still no plays. Okay, I drew the all the lands I wanted. That is cool. So, um, just play the Raptor maybe. That's the more mana efficient play. Oh, they have that thing. Okay, be my guest. I'm not really concerned about that. Oh, they have also black in the deck. But another player with scheming aspirants. <laughs> uh, I guess with the whisper of the draws, I can, you know, get them. So there is that. To get the land. Oh, they choose to. Pro oh, I mean, they just played this thing to drain. They didn't have anything, any counters to add to anywhere. Well, I'm pretty happy that they used one card just to as a drain two life from the opponent. Now, I should. Play this thing first. Because I wanna get make it have counters. They will be blocking here and then I will let the damage happen and then I will use the whispers to K 
heal it. And do the proliferating here. They get the points on these tickets now. So uh, when this deals combat damage to a player, which is easy because this can't be blocked, you may remove two oil counters from it. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery, copy that spell. That is huge. I guess I'll just do double augury then. <laughs> Alright. But the opponent didn't actually play anything. Yeah, alright. Take action. Play an augury, copy it. Um, I kind of want to have the land, but I suppose I can take this Hive Master and maybe get a land from the other one. Unless there's another <laughs> very good card I need. Okay, this time I'm taking the island here. I have interaction in my hand. I can now just keep the pressure up here. Okay, now they had another counter spell. Sure. Yeah, that's not really a one-one creature. Is not what they want to have here. Yeah. Well, this this is let's say a lot easier than the previous game. But let's now see if they have some tricks here. I could even play the inside draw draw six here. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll just play the scrap trap though. Mod more board presence other than cards. Besides, a draw, draw six would make me... It would make me actually discard a card, although I could probably discard an excess card, because if I if I play this now and draw, draw six, that means I will um, have at nine cards, I play a land and have only one land up. Yeah. Anyhow, let's do this. More proliferating. They are at seven poison now. This is gonna make them... Hmm, I can actually double the Raskas Fall, though, just to give them two poison. Yeah, well, I mean, it really wasn't necessary upon it. They played like, um... Two of these very slow counter spells. The Aspirant and they used these to drain to. Yeah, alright, so what do I want to do? They have the Siphoner and the 1-3. And some counter spells. So... Uh... I don't know. I, know. I don't actually like the fact that my, my deck has a double mesmerizing dose with the Raskas Fall. Kind of tempted to just cut the Raskas Fall, actually. Should I play now or something? Some trick here? Aspirant's Ascent? Yeah, let's try the Ascent. That thing does give also toxic to the targeted creature, so it can be used to deal also poison. Um, <laughs> oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> the Drake is so good, but this is a six lander. <laughs> I'm gonna mulligan. Okay, this is better, <laughs> definitely. Um, out of these, yeah, I don't think yeah I think I like the bounce spell more than the whispers whisper of the draws although I can maybe use the whisper in combination with my two two creature not sure if I can make a kill with this thing that easily though okay I'm gonna keep the bounce spell this is at least going to work and if I play it on a cheap thing uh, this gets double counters At least they... I, I know they do have the 1-1 one, one flyer though. Do they play it now? Of course. Okay, they have a thrumming bird. So another thing I would have liked to minus 1, minus 1, but... Oh, well. Now, I want to play this guy before I start playing my bounce and stuff spell, but I also want to play my 2-2 two, two toxic guy. And I don't want to play the dose either before the synthesizer is on the battlefield. But of course I will play the dose if I really need to remove some of the things now.
This doesn't do anything yet. Nothing has a counter. Another planeswalker, huh? And they can proliferate <laughs> more counters on chase. Well, I guess I can bounce the chase. I won't get the proliferating, but that is what I can do. I guess they can go for a mill of 15. Maybe not a big deal right now. Yep, let's just um, do this now. Uh, Chase, sadly, is a form and a placewalker, even though they use three on it. So I won't get the proliferating from, from the serum snare. But it is an online permanent, so planeswalkers are valid targets. Become subdued. Yeah, this can be 21 very soon. Okay, double thrumming bird. That's quite something. And uh, okay, I, I think I should keep my minus one, minus one things there. So, are they going to double block? I, of course, wish they are. Oh, I guess I'll play the Synthesizer regardless right now. Try to harm Jace. Although, maybe I just... I'm gonna bounce it anyway, so yeah, let's attack them. Give them the poison here. Okay, they don't want that poison to be dealt right so gonna have to bounce this guy don't want to get milled for 21 that's in limited quite nasty now I would still have a few turns of course many turns actually but um, let's make them replay it I might have this as a 3-3 unblockable on this turn. But they also have a double thrumming bird giving, you know, chase. Um, I guess they could have an, even attack with the thrumming birds and milled for 21 right now, but probably they are gonna wait. They can go to 8 loyalty now. But I can now... <laughs> At least I can also lock down one of the thr thrumming birds. Oh, this is actually quite nice because now I can double spell to make this thing for sure um, yeah, it's a very sad to lose the poison dealing capability here but I'm gonna have to attack on Jace with both of these guys because I would li like to you know deal a poison to them but whatever this is what I'm gonna do let's see um, so next turn I'm gonna play just a, I suppose it can be just a scrap trap bigger thing and then I will just um, have to dose this guy so that this will deal 3 actually. So Chase goes down to 3. Loyalty now, so the milling isn't so, so scary and of course they can only have one thrumming bird here. But they can minus, oh, minus 3 minus oh, the synthesizer, but I do have the Hive Master then able to attack. But of course problem is now... Um, they can play like a 6-drop, but let's see if they have one. Seems like they didn't have a play. Because if they have like a, you know, anything that can block a 3-2, uh, I can't even attack. And that would be yet another game where uh, I'm just trying to deal with the Planeswalker. But that did not happen now. So let's first try the attacks and uh, see what happens. It seems like they have actual nothing there. They just jump there. Well, that is really good news for me. And okay, they have they're gonna have the counter spell, right? That's almost assured. But I'm not gonna be without playing anything. So, but do I force them to leave, leave mana up? Because it's blue, blue, and one generic mana. I think I still want them to use it because I have the scrap trap on the next turn. They get to proliferate for on chase here. But um, uh, it's still you know, only three loyalty. They have no blockers now. And then maybe I can resolve the scrap trap then. So the second ability is draw three if a, uh, if a graveyard, graveyard has 20 of all cards. Well, that's not happening. They ha I have three and they have three as well.
Okay, they can... Another creature enters. Proliferate. Alright. Well... Um... If they trade with the Hive Master, I'm, I'm happy about that. And they seem to be doing that. Okay. proliferate on this entrance. I haven't been able to deal one poison to them because of the chase. There's another blocker on my, but it's not a blocker on the 4-4, four four, so yep, I, I guess I can still you know, pressure the chase because I, if they don't minus 3, minus oh, this thing, this will just deal 3 damage to it. And of course I have the option to attack with everything and feed my blight belly rat, but I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Okay, well that's a good one to have. Um, so... If they make me mill 15, I'm not dying to that. So I guess... So if I attack with everything on the chase, the perfected mine, they will actually lose the chase. And I will lose my, my rat. Assuming they have nothing in their hand. Is that worth it? Because I can also attack with the Scrap Trap, which they might jump block, or they might take 4 to go and making Chase go back to 1 loyalty. I think this time I'm just gonna get rid of the Chase, and losing the Rat is fine because I have a draw 3 in my hand. Hopefully they don't have the second counter spell there. If they block now the Scrap Trap, I would actually be also very happy, because I get to still deal damage to Chase. It does seem like they don't have a spell that they can cast, I mean, maybe they have the counter spell actually. So this is just a blue, green, black, they have a double caster blues, they have early black, early green. Okay, so they, they went for the protect Chase at all costs play. I guess they don't... They are not able to really leave mana up for a counter spell. They need to you know, deal with this board somehow. I was actually rather surprised they chose that because they have to believe they can actually continue protecting their chase. So the card in their hand was that something that allows them to keep protecting the chase because I can do the same attack now. Okay, that's not gonna do anything. Um, now I'm gonna deal poison to them actually. I think the chase is gonna die now, so I will deal the poison before proliferating. Now they might have the counter spell, but um, if they do have the counter spell, I should play this because they might also have the second counter spell that attack is for two. But they are, they are top decking, and I have a good board now. So if they do counter this, I can live with that. Yep. And now I have a 3 3 unblockable, a 4 4 big creature. So hopefully they don't top deck anything amazing, and that's definitely far from amazing. It is like four gain four life draw a card, draw a card with a delay actually. So the synthesizer has to be dealt with. That's gonna get them lands or proliferating. That's totally useless. Okay, and they even drew a land, and I drew that thing so. This no, I think the only mass removal options in this format are white, so I can just play this, and they have no way to deal with all this. This is, I mean, all of these are lethal, and this requires two blockers, so they need to have five blockers, some massive light ga life gain, or whatever a combination of removal and blockers, with one card in hand. All right, I'm gonna actually change this out to this retrofitter because I don't have it in the, in the deck. I will... Maybe I will cut the main deck Raskas Fall actually. I, I just It's so bad when you have first cast one of these and then you can draw that. I'm gonna actually use the main deck Ascent here and then choose based on what the opponent has. Um, yeah, should... I haven't done much work with the Aspirants but I have two of them so let's put that thing in there.
Okay, shall I see yet another planeswalker? How about this hand? Now, if this was an island swamp with the with the augury, that would be a very easy keep. Now I have the anoint with affliction, and even if I draw a swamp here, I can cast the infectious inquiry. So I think I will keep this. Uh, again, I need to draw a specific, I mean, card which is just a land, any land, even a tapped land would be like okay. I have these two instants to maybe deal with their early plays. Well, at least the affliction does. This is not so certain. Well. I guess I got a little lucky here again. Now I might again save with the proliferate because I'm gonna give them poison with this thing and maybe I'll just use the anoint here. Uh, I'm on the play. Yeah, I'm actually doing it. Well, I drew the lands. So they get a poison counter. I get two cards back to seven here. Then I can play the head cleaver. The augury now means that uh, this is exile anything. Because they have one poison. No, no. Uh, not one ogre, but once I cast both of them. Okay, they have a decent three up. But I'm glad they are on the draw, so I'm not pre I'm not pressured. Pressured by anything yet. Now they have a free attack here. Unless they want to this to contribute to blocks. But I mean if they attack now that that, that doesn't mean they have a trick. But the head cleaver is quite decent here, so I think I'm gonna take three if they attack. Okay, well that is something I can... I guess I can exile it. Hmm, you know what I can do? Well, I can also bounce it, but that's... Not necessarily... What I want to do. Now, if I exile it, they don't get the trigger. If I let them double block, I can exile this and then use the Whisper of the Dross. To finish off the Vorak. Is that something I should do? Because the thing is that this thing will, you know, I can just bounce it and then this will deal with anything after that. M much, you know, deals with much di more difficult creatures than the Vorak. So I'm actually going to start with the... Now this is also very good use for the Whisper of the Dross, that's right. But I think I'm still gonna start with this, make them go to two poison and here we have... Mm, can I keep an all? <laughs> the synthesizer is also quite good, but I think I, here I will prefer the proliferating effects. And I, I prefer the creature too, so I have some creatures to play here. So that's what I'm gonna do. They get a poison. And now I'll just... Uh, Oh, but this is four mana creature. I, I don't get the proliferation with the snare. Uh, you know what? My original plan is to happen now. <laughs> so, my original plan is that I will... No, so, wrong order. I have to first proliferate so that... I actually needed to proliferate first because I couldn't have exalt this before doing that. But yeah, I didn't make a mistake here. I... Almost did though, but now I can exile this thing, so that's the point. They don't get the card, and now they lose the Vorak, and now they might have removal here, but that's why I picked my scrap trap in here. And now, and if they don't have removal, they have a real risk of dying to poison because this will make them go into five poison. And then I have this to proliferate, this probably to proliferate. I can even uh, bounce my own cheap things. And still proliferate. I have actually, you know, well, well, they had removal. So much of that. They had even a cheap removal spell, but nothing to follow up with. Um, I kind of want to play the toxic thing first, but is that making any sense? I don't want to win with damage. I want I, I, I want to win with anything, but I think the more likely scenario is that I win with poison. So I'm actually going to augur here now. Play the hive master. Okay, this thing I'm gonna have here for sure. And then I will still play this thing, but next turn I can play the spell dancer. And then serum snare will. Okay, they, that, that does nothing though. I think I'll just bounce it for a... Uh, 
normally they have a cultivar. I guess if they jump block with that thing, it's not such a big deal. So I'm just gonna bounce this. So they go to five now. Poison that by me. This will be able to add two to that. Um, but of course, this Hive Master won't be able to connect anymore. That was just a little bit of tempo that I bought there. Okay, that's working. So let's try to deal here. Two unblocked. I mean, if they don't have a removal on the spell dancer, that will also help finishing off. Because now I get to drain two here as well. All right. Well, I'm going to sack the hive master. It doesn't really do much here anymore. They have a doubled Sealdred's Edict, something to keep in mind. So now the Spell Dancer gets also, I mean, they get the poison and now the Spell Dancer gets another of these. But I had no spell to copy yet, so let's see if I find something like the draw three. <laughs> I would much like to draw six and proliferate twice. Yeah, that would be basically a game over. But now they have still three cards in their hand. And if they kill the spell dancer, I don't have that great attacks. I mean, I can attack with the scrap trap, but that's only gonna trade with their scrap trap. They have a couple of lands they can crack to to draw more. Yeah, I'm not taking here for. Why would I? I'll use their tricks. Or oh, make them use their tricks. I don't think they're gonna attack here unless this is gonna be a good block, a good result for them. Uh, six six now. Now removal on the spell dancer or not? Did they have a double trick turn? Okay, they play a 5-drop instead. Okay, it's going to be close if they can remove the spell. Oh, maybe even if they don't. I mean, this is just like about 6-10 o'clock. Uh, problem is if I hit another land flood, uh, then I won't actually win even in this current situation. But they, they did an untap a 5th land. I mean, that must mean they have 5 mana worth of plays here. Why would they otherwise do that? Makes no sense, so... Why are they now suddenly... Oh, they have a return a creature from any graveyard to the battlefield. That's what, what they have. Yeah, the bat emergence. Okay, they want to get a land. I, mean, I had to 5-4-4. Four, four. Maybe they were scared about me bouncing that it would go, of course, to my hand. They want to land instead of... No, okay, actually proliferating doesn't do anything. And of course, of course I did draw just that thing, so... Yep, I need... I need something. <laughs> this is 9 damage they can deal each turn now. So... Now it's a shame they... because there was the one turn for when they had the Sealdred's Edict, uh, when I chose to, you know... I mean, if I would have been able to connect once with this thing, they would be now at 9, and of course... I would top deck one proliferate effect and that would be it. But now that's not going to... I mean, one proliferate effect isn't going to do enough. It has to, of course, be accompan accompanied by something very valuable, but... Well, I don't have just proliferating here. Of course, there are cards that proliferate do something else too. But I could see I, I draw my 1-1 one, one Drake now, the Oil Drake, which is a very good card, but maybe not a great top deck with a basically empty hand. And they are having a removal of big... Oh, maybe... Yeah. All right, all right. So, just getting everything removed, and uh, now the opponent is winning. 
light belly rat is well it's something I can't jump block with it can enable the drain here and uh, you know make them go to eight poison if I get my draw of three cards and proliferate yeah that will that will definitely be useful but it was a shame that they had to remove all two but I, I guess they can draw more cards but this is yeah I mean I guess I have a removal too. I have two no no I, no no I actually no one of them is on the bottom of the deck I yeah the, the mesmerizing dose is there sadly I could double block the warak but of course I don't want to lose my aspirant so, so let's jump six damage make them go to eight poison and I, you know trigger one of these drain effects but is that gonna be enough if I get the draw three and proliferate yeah that, then that would be most likely enough because then of course now that is very good too yeah that is really good uh, there's no attack for me but I'm going to get back a the same rat thing so now they they will go to actually the nine poison now Funnily, yeah, the spell dancer isn't as good as the rat now. The rat is better than the, uh, the three drop as well. Uh, so if I draw my draw three cards thing, that, that'll just win the game. Because I was thinking about playing the land, but I think I don't need to play it. Do I have my draw two here? No attacks, come on. Did I play it? Yeah, I played it as my first spell in this game. But now that I have a 4-4 Toxic 2 here, I guess yeah they, they, they haven't corrupted me, so this thing cannot come back from the graveyard. So if they do attack with the 6-6, six, six, I don't think I'm even wanting to jump uh, double block. I will just jump block with the Blight Belly Rat. That will also trigger the Aspirant. But yeah, if they attack, yeah, I will block with the rat, of course, and then they go to nine poison. There's nothing that prevents that from happening. And now I have a lot of good draws, you know, cards that just make me proliferate, and it's immediate victory. And thanks to the aspirant, I'm also at a quite healthy life total here. Removal on the Paladin. I mean, if they have, I can still have a few turns. That thing has not Toxic 2 and it returns when... Okay, whatever. Come on, any proliferating effect and that's it. Don't need anything else. <laughs> I drew the Drake here. Well... Um, two Toxic Attackers, they have four blockers. Nope. <clears throat> I don't recall how many proliferate effects I have, but I know there are at least two. There is definitely the draw three and proliferate, and there's definitely one mesmerizing dose. How about the minus one, minus one? It's here, so no, not that. Both of my auguries have gone. My bounce spell has gone. They will attack with all that all right so that means uh, that means that means i mean i'm gonna block here uh, see whatever is that trick here and then the troller rake now can i dr draw a non-proliferating non-creature spell which would make this deal two in the air i guess i can take a poison here so let's just take seven and one poison and see what's their trick with the... Because, I mean, they attack the three. This doesn't have death touch, so maybe they have the minus one, minus one. It will enter the battlefield, of course, but, I mean, they get to what? Either proliferate or get a land. I don't care about that. They got a land that draws them a card. All right. Well. Oh. All right, so I guess I have a... 
what is gonna add oil to this that doesn't proliferate? <laughs> I'm not sure. So now I need to, of course, do some blocks. I mean, can I try to attack win with the drake here? That's the question. Because I can just I can just jump block the scrap trap with it. I think the one point of damage I can deal isn't gonna matter because once this triggers, it means they get a tenth poison anyway. So this drain isn't relevant for that. Um, how can I? I? I believe I'm not going to. I'm not gonna attack here because it just feels that this is gonna be the jump block on the next turn. Drake on that scrap trap, and I need to just find a way to give them the final point of poison. I guess I have also the menace, another menace two for toxic two. I have a second one of these in the deck. Okay, they go oh, the damage might have been relevant. Oh, it might have been actually relevant because if I draw a non-creature now that isn't gonna proliferate this would be a 2-2 two, two. oh man if I draw now a non-creature that okay well I just draw a land so what the heck let's see how many outs in the deck are okay so one does this thing I have a still Wait a minute. Oh yeah, of course, because one of the, uh, I scratched one of them to the bottom, so yeah. Shuffling is good because it now unlocks the one dose from the bottom of the deck. Um, so there's one, two, three. I guess this one. And this can also, uh, they don't have a flying blocker, so I guess there's like five outs. There is, there are five outs out of 15, so, you know, 33%. And I didn't check if there was any relevance to attack with the drake, but I think I need a drake to block with. And the rat isn't gonna be an out if I'm gonna die to the combat damage before the proliferate triggers. But they don't have that much power right now. They do have a lot of cards though. Well, at least I'm not batting against a planeswalker, but I am <laughs> one, one poison away from winning. There it is. So, now the thing is that they can still counter this spell. They can still counter this spell. So, what is the, what is the plan here? I guess the drake is gonna get its counter anyway, so if, if they counter... Like, I'm, I'm just, I can't even be bothered here. Let's just play it on here. And let's hope they don't have a... Yep, they don't. But I had, you know, five outs in 15 cards, so it wasn't really that unlikely. Alright, so another opponent that has bunch of removal but the sealed dreads edicts are maybe a reason to play something like the fleshless gladiators although is the 2-2 gonna be it can block the skull dweller um it can keep com coming back in my deck too i kind of like it against two edict effects because that's the kind uh, that's sort of the most sacrificable creature here so the ascent probably isn't needed and I play the gladiator. How about to offer immortality? Is that that's gonna be okay against the mage's mantle trick? But I mean I don't want to cut all my cards that do things and all the rest of these are gonna do things. I like the serum snare against the tricks as well. I, I think okay whisper of the dross. Yeah they have a Testament better and they have two of those. Or oh, did they have two? Yeah, they have two. Mm. 
and they have the one one death toucher. So I I think I'm gonna use the whispers here. This is the deck. I don't think the skitterling is going to be too good, so I'll just have it like this. Okay, a good starting hand. 2 drop, 3 drop, 4 drop. And they Mali can... So maybe they don't have such an explosive start. But then again, at 6 cards, you can still have an explosive start. Okay, we're starting with a cultivator there. Well, I have my draw 3 now. Let's see me never hitting either 5 lands or a second blue. Okay, well that's a good one. But they, have, they can actually put a 4-drop here now. But it's not like the Gladiator is that much better. I guess if they do have a Sildred's Edict, then the Gladiator would have been better. Okay, there's no... Oh, I'm gonna attack now. They might have... They might have the... Plus 2, plus 2 aura, of course. They might have the plus two, plus two aura. I'm gonna have no attacks and play the Hive Master. Make them use it now. Because they missed the land drop. They are going to... Okay, they didn't have it. So this was just... Um, because they could have blocked the untapped land and I have three mana for it. So maybe I just missed out there. But I, I didn't want to risk it. I wanted them to commit the mana to it if they have it in their hand. And I suppose now that they don't, I'm still happy of how things went. And I can actually continue to curve out now with the Sealdred's Head Cleaver. Okay, they have some trick there. But it's not gonna be the plus two, plus two aura. Two mana trick. Okay, so maybe they have this available on the previous turn. Titanic Croix, yeah, that's fine. Don't have any response of my own, but that's that's not a permanent uh, effect. Plus, I still have my 1-1 one, one here. And now they do have the poison, so I can start my proliferating business. With the Aspirant as well. If I had two of these, you know, draining four, draining four per a proliferating would be actually madness, so it would be cool to see, see that situation happening. Um, now I can trade my head cleaver on this cultivator. Not sure I want to do that. <laughs> no, it, it's not gonna make any sense. I'd rather just play now that I'll play the aspirant and then the augury. But I can play this on their turn because I don't think there's one mana. There, there is the minus one, minus one effect if I didn't side it out. No, I didn't side it out, but I don't think it's. I'm, I'm not going to use it on this turn anyway. Yeah, I could attack here with everything, although everything is not that great. They can block the one one with the one two and eat this two two. They would take. Two poison and then proliferating into yeah it's uh, it's possible to attack with the two two and the what two four ah uh, I don't know I I will just use the augury here for now I do have my own removal spells if I can just you know lock down uh, for example the scrap trap that's gonna be quite decent and I can now proliferate here pro proliferate here. I would be wanting to deal some poison damage with my with my guys though. Okay, well they had they had that stuff. All right. This is not gonna be quickly over. I need some interaction here for sure. Well, this is a this is actually. 
pretty crazy because the Drake is so good, but the Augury thing is so good too. I mean, they can have just removal on the Drake. And then that's not going to do much. But then again, they will have to use the removal on that Drake. That will get out of hand. Oh yeah, this is actually... This is actually hard. So good cards, both of these in this situation. Drake doesn't deal poison. Am I gonna win with poison or not? Because I can... Every, every proliferating effect is also gonna make drain them. So this is really nasty now. I think I'm gonna take the Auguri, but that is a really difficult... Difficult situation. Yeah, I don't need to do two. Let's just... Let's just do this right now. Mm, yeah, there's no attack still. But yeah, I mean, proliferating all the 10, well, 9 poison there is gonna be tough. Okay, so they are gonna go for aggression now. I, I just drew three cards, so that's understandable, of course. So do I want to... Well, I think the Nimrazer Paladin is actually gonna get the Blightbelly Rat back. So I think I will just um try to deal with this guy, see what they have. They might have the plus two, plus two over to save the Skull Dweller, but I will proliferate here, drain two. Now they don't have a lot of blockers on my head cleaver. Yeah, that's... I mean, they are they gonna take the two poison now? I take a bunch of damage here, but I'm, I'm gonna also gain some life back here. If they take two from the head cleaver now... Well, they don't, unless I find... Okay, they had... Wow, that was pretty sweet for them, and I didn't draw any of my interaction yet. So, should I just go with the Auguri now and find some interaction? Because I do want to connect now. If I get to deal two poison to them. That's gonna be so huge. Huge indeed. Okay, let's go with this thing. Uh, all these options are so good again, but I think it's going to be the Blight Belly Rat again. Is it? This also gives them poison, but also makes me lose too, but it will draw me cards. Um... I guess what I can do here is I can attack with the head cleaver and one one. If they wanna block the head cleaver, I will trade with the stalker, which is you know pretty annoying and sad. But it's not like I'm gonna add block with the head cleaver, so maybe I'll do that just to deal one poison to them, and then just take the rat for blocks because I like the blocking options there. Okay, I'm gonna take the rat here, <laughs> man. This is tough. I guess I'll just attack with the Aspirant too. It is only one damage. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to win with damage though. But I might. <laughs> How about if they don't block? They attack with a lot of creatures then. But they can't really go to 8 poison here. Well, they can always block the 1 1, that's for sure. Okay, I don't think the Asparant's 1 damage matters. So I'm gonna do this. 
they have to take either two poison and eat this for free or then just take one poison and trade the stalker with the head cleaver. Okay, they choose that. I'm very happy that they go to seven poison now. That was huge. So I'll just play my Nimbracer Paladin, getting the bite belly rat back and then I can play both rats on the next turn. And the gladiator just to have some blockers. I'm not dying this time. They are top decking here, so hopefully they didn't get anything too sick. Yep, I can make them proliferate, no big deal. Let's take the four, I don't wanna give them any cards yet. I know I could have also taken the four from that thing, but and attack and attack with this thing. It has toxic too, but I don't think it's necessary now that I have the blight belly rats. I should be winning with poison, most likely. Okay, that's a good one too. So I actually have eight <laughs> land, so I can play all my two drops here. Now there's no good attack, but it doesn't matter. That leaves me three swamps, and yep, I can cast it all. So if I now hit a pocket of lands, I can still win with the unblockable 2 1. Unless they do, do draw removal for it right away. No, nothing. So with these two twos here, I guess they could have the exiling spell that I have two in my deck. But I mean, mostly these are just gonna die in combat, and they will be at nine poison already. And the opponent really realizes that they, I mean, I guess they can attack with something like the testament better. I think I would block with the gladiator even, or maybe with the rat. No, with the rat. And then um, they don't really have a a plan to push through and they already saw that my deck has so many prolif proliferating effects that they just gave up understandably so again one of these blue black proliferating focus decks i do like the archetype and i, I think it's quite you know play well not only playable but good uh, if this deck had more of these icor synthesizers that could have been would have been a, a secondary plan of attack with these unblockables, but now I actually had more of this poison plan, and of course the head cleaver is quite nice at that, hard to block, only two damage, but you care about the toxic two a lot more uh, than, than about the damage here. The aspirant is quite good, and I'm willing to you know go with these guys in in uh, future too. It's not hard to get the deck that has like almost 10 proliferating effects, and these things really are also just good blockers on turn 2, they can block anything that has 2 power and trade with anything that has only 1 toughness, there are some 3 ones in the format. So, of course the first match was mostly about the Planeswalker in both games, so I shouldn't feel like that this is a bad archetype because I couldn't trophy with it, I could have actually even won the first match if, if the Planeswalker wasn't so nastily doing its business there. But yeah, 2-1 is still fine here and uh, I will see you in the next draft video then. Come on, give me the price. <laughs> Alright, thank you for watching and bye-bye. Uh,